So we're going to take a look at a reflected cross-site scripting attack, and it will be taking advantage of a vulnerable search input. So let's take a look at the lab. So we have a blog style page and we have the option to search the blog. And one of the very first things we like to do when searching for cross-site scripting attack vectors is to input an arbitrary string and just see where it presents itself on the page. So let's search for a string. Let's pop open the dev tools and let's search for that arbitrary string in the DOM. We've got two matches. The first is inside that H1 tag. It's unlikely we're going to be able to do anything with that. So let's have a look at the second appearance of our arbitrary string. So we have an input field, type equals text, placeholder equals search the blog, name equals search, value equals Zen shell. So thinking about the context here, our search term is appearing inside the value attribute of that input element. So the question is, can we break out of that value attribute and create a new attribute? For example, something like an on mouse over event, and then we can pop up a JavaScript alert when that event occurs. So the way that we're going to break out of that is by ending with a double quote. So hopefully we are outside of that value attribute now, but still inside the input tags. So let's see if we can create a new attribute. It's going to be an on mouse over event. And when that event occurs, i.e. when the user's cursor is over the element in question, we want to call the JavaScript alert function. So let's search for that. You can see the URL at the top of the page is updated because all of this information is contained within inside the query string. So we have that search parameter and the value is the URL encoded version of our search string. Now you can see straight away we get congratulations, you solved the lab, echo to the page. Notice what happens if we mouse over that search box, we get the alert. Just as a little bit of post analysis, let's see if we can check out that element. In fact, it's very difficult to right click on the element directly because it obviously triggers the alert. So looking in the DOM here, we have this form, we have our input element. Picking up where we left off, we have value equals Zen shell, and then we have the on mouse over attribute. Now you probably realize that the end result of this is going to be a trailing double quote, which we can actually see there in the DOM this doesn't look like it's valid HTML, but the DOM is fairly intelligent and can sometimes still understand what is intended by a certain element, even if it doesn't quite match up to correct syntax. So that doesn't look like it's correct syntax to me, but you can still see that the rest of the element itself is working just fine. Now you might wonder how were we able to do this? It doesn't seem like we should be able to just break out of an attribute with inside an element. And it's not a vulnerability with HTML or even a vulnerability with the DOM. It's just a vulnerability with the way that this particular block has been coded by the developer. And we have to be very careful when writing to the DOM. This is often done with something like JavaScript's document.write method. And all it does is take a string. It's very easy to inject into the DOM if the developer is just taking our string and appending it to the string that's being passed to the document.write method. So there's obviously no handling of our string beforehand, maybe stripping it of certain special characters before it's then passed into something like the document.write method. Of course, we don't know exactly what's happening on the back end, but we do know something is being mishandled by the developer for this vulnerability to arise. And it's usually to do with not properly sanitizing a string that's passed to the back end by the user. So really what should happen is as soon as the script at the back end sees that we've tried to pass in a double quote, it strips that from the output before it passes it to the document.write method. If it's not handled correctly, as you can see, we've been able to inject directly into the DOM. We've been able to break out of the attribute that we were inside and start writing additional arbitrary attributes with inside that input element. Then of course, it's fairly trivial just to listen for an on mouse over event and pop up the alert function when that event is triggered. 
This is a type of reflected cross-site scripting attack. So it's not stored to the page, but if any user has this specific link, then the same search terms are going to be reflected to the page. So if we head to a completely separate tab and paste that same link in, well, we've timed out to the lab in this case. So I've just fired up a fresh lab so we can see that at work. If we just take this URL, we obviously try and get this into the hands of a victim. Well, we're not going to try and do that, but that's how the attack would work from a nefarious actor. User clicks that link or pastes it into their browser. We can see the cross-site scripting attack is instantly executed in response to the URL. So it's a type of reflected cross-site scripting attack.